Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, are you ready to make your demand for your daily bread today? A miracle is about to happen to someone. Praise God. And that person is you. Can we declare the words together? Say, Father, today I demand and I receive my daily bread. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, don't just think it, say it out. Angels don't know what you think, but they hear what you say. So when we make this declaration, say it with your mouth. You're not saying it. You know, someone say, hey, but if I pray, my God will hear me. See, the problem here is not God. See, that's the thing with a lot of people. God is not the problem. But you've got angels he has assigned to work with you and they never know what's on your mind. Angels listening to your words. Angels look at your actions to tell what to do with you. See, that's the reason God, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's just a lot in my spirit to share with you these days. That's the reason you find God in dealing with his children. He gives them certain physical things to do. See, he tells them to do certain physical things. In, 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 when they came out of Egypt, God told them something. He says, hey, all these commands, all these words that you have received from me, write them upon your doorpost, write them on your wrist, put them as a neckband, put them on your bed, put them everywhere. And God, now why? Why? He said, so that when your children see these things and ask that, why are you staying in the world walls with these writings? Then you will tell them, my son, sit down. When one time we were slaves in a land called Egypt, and then you tell them how God delivered you. Why? Now, you, you need to get this. God was interested in their children, not just them. So God was giving them instructions that will help not them now, the children. This is not amazing. Now, that is on one hand. Then on the other hand, when you see God tell them to do physical, for example, they got to the Red Sea. Now remember, God had said, an angel will go before them. And that angel is going to be a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. All right. So the angel was leading them and the angel led them to the Red Sea. And they got there, not knowing what to do. The angel didn't do anything. The angel stood still. And then they were all there, waiting. And suddenly Pharaoh and his army started coming behind them. And guess what? The angel left from their front and went to their back and became a wall between the Egyptians and the children of Israel. But the angels still didn't do anything about them. Until Moses cried out to the Lord. Now, didn't God know that they were supposed to cross the Red Sea? Didn't the angel know that they were supposed to cross the Red Sea? They knew, that's why he led them to the Red Sea. The angel knew. The angel was following the direction that God has given to him. But then he got to the Red Sea. Something was supposed to happen at the Red Sea. So what was supposed to happen? They were all waiting. And then suddenly Moses cried out to God. God said, don't cry out to me. Stretch your hands over the sea and divide it. Think about it. God said, don't cry to me. Meaning, Moses should have known what to do. Now, I have a strong feeling in my heart because I've experienced these things with the Lord before. The Lord must have instructed Moses concerning that Red Sea before them. He must have told Moses, when you get to the Red Sea, stretch your hands over it and divide it. And it's possible Moses did not remember. Because he didn't come, he didn't come on that day when they got to the Red Sea. He must have come when they were still in Egypt. God must have told him different strategies to, do you understand what I'm saying? Now, so they got there and they were all waiting. Because God, the Bible said, he will not leave us ignorant. So that's why when Moses now cried to the Lord, God could have said, oh Moses, all right, I was waiting for you to cry. Now let me give you an instruction on what to do. No! God says, Moses, don't cry to me. 
Tell the people to go forward because you have told them to stand still. Tell the people to go forward. Then you stretch your hands over the sea. Now guess what? All the angel was waiting for. He was waiting for Moses because that's the instruction the angel had received. He, he knew he wasn't the one to, to part the sea. He knew it was Moses' job to part the sea. So the angel got to Moses, to, to the Red Sea, and was waiting for Moses. And Moses, obeying the Lord. Yeah, I'm sure he just said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord, I'm so sorry, I remember now. <laughs> See, and then he got there. He said, everybody come forward. And then he came forward. Then he stretched his hands. And the moment he stretched his hands, and guess what? The angel walked through the sea. Now that's what happened. The angel walked, that's what parted the sea. Listen, guys. When we pray and we speak out, it's not because of God. God knows what's in our hearts, but he has given angels command. David said, for he has given his angels charge concerning me to keep me in all my ways. Now that means an angel, the angels have received charge concerning all your ways. But see, that charge includes you. What you are supposed to do. What you are supposed to say. So sometimes when you see these things, you know, sometimes you see we use anointing oil. Sometimes, you know, we, we, we give instructions in the service. You know, we say, everybody, you know, shout hallelujah seven times. Those things are not for jokes. Because an angel has been instructed that when you see this person, Shout hallelujah seven times. It is time to open up a gate for the person. And then you're in that service. Nothing will really make you shout hallelujah seven times. And then you get into that service. And then the pastor is preaching. He just stops and says, look, shout hallelujah seven times. And then you go, hallelujah. And then you keep quiet. And every other person is shouting hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They say, man, man, this guy can shout too. This one even shouts the loudest. They are shouting hallelujah. Yo, meanwhile, your angel is there waiting to count seven hallelujah from you. Then he opens the door. And then you stop at three. You start looking around. And then it's okay, maybe it's not this season yet. They wait. Because is that how it works? I'm telling you the truth. That's how people get delayed in their lives. Not because God is delayed, because they don't follow instructions from the Spirit of God. Now, we are talking about manifesting the calling of God. If you've got to manifest the calling of God in your life, then you've got to obey every instruction that God gives to you. Because the things of the Spirit are made manifest on the earth by instructions by commands. God doesn't just do anything by himself. He gives a command. Sometimes you're praying and then you hear the Lord say, pray like this or ask me to do this for you. Why do I have to ask you? Don't you know I need it? You see, you don't get it. It's not him. It's the angels. Everything we are to manifest on earth is tied to angels. So you must then learn how to follow instructions. If you cannot follow instructions, if you're rebellious to instructions, then you will be rebellious to God's will because God's will is manifested by instructions. Every miracle you read about in scripture has to do with one instruction or the other. Even in the life of Jesus, Jesus was with Peter in the house. Tax collectors came. And Jesus asked, are we supposed to pay tax or not? He said, eh, we're not supposed to pay tax because we're citizens. And Jesus looked at the situation and said, you know what, Peter? Let's not offend them. But there was no money with them. So what do we do, Lord? And then Jesus heard the Lord. That's what happened. Jesus heard the Lord. He said, I've sent you money with a, through a fish. The money is in the mouth of a fish. Fish, money. Peter is a fisherman. 
Okay, good. So Peter has two for fishing in his hand. Peter, take your hook. He didn't say take your net. He said take your hook because Jesus was clear. See, sometimes we make those mistakes. Now, Peter was a fisherman. He had his boats. He had his nets. He had his hook. So those are things you find in the house of a fisherman. Jesus could have said, Peter, take your boats and your nets. Let's go for a catch. <clears throat> They've done that before. But Jesus this time said, take a hook. Go to the sea. The first fish you catch, open the mouth. You will see money there. Now guess what? The tax collectors were waiting. Are you following me? The tax collectors were waiting. I want you to catch it now. You know, I should say to the Lord, Lord, but sometimes you can just be amazing. Was it not easier to us <laughs> wouldn't it have been, have been easier for us you know that you tell Peter Peter go to the river show your net you will catch a good measure of fish go sell it in the market and bring the money you know yeah Peter was a fisherman so nice instruction but how would you just tell the guy take a hook go to the river the first fish you catch open the mouth you will see coin and then the Lord said, because they needed money right there and then the, the tax collectors were waiting. So going to catch the fish, set, pushing out the boat, catching the fish, taking to the market, all those things would take time. So God provided the money right there as they needed. Now, Jesus had to follow the instruction given by the Holy Spirit to him. He had to re relay the same instruction to Peter. The same thing when Jesus fed the 5,000. It was in obedience to instruction. It was the Holy Spirit that asked Jesus first, do you know we can feed all these people? And Jesus said, yeah, I know. Let's feed them. Hmm? Let's feed them. So yeah, let's feed them. And then Jesus turned over to the disciples and said, hey, um, where can we get bread? I want to feed these people. And then he said, huh? Even if we buy the whole bread in the village, it won't be enough. Jesus said, what do we have? <coughs> So what do we have? Now already someone had donated, someone had brought his offering or his seed or his tithe or whatever it is, or five loaves and two fishes. So the disciples said, that's all we have from that little boy that came to give. It wasn't when Jesus was looking for bread that the boy said, okay, I have bread though. No, the boy had already given it to them. <clears throat> it was his offering or whatever it was, maybe tithe, maybe first fruits. Get it. So the disciples said, this is all we have here. And Jesus said, make the people sit down. He multiplied it and he fed the whole people in obedience to an instruction. The man by the pool, Jesus said, do you want to be well? He said, ah, he started giving complaints. Now the man has been there for 38 long years. In those 38, now the man was, is not a fool to be going to that same pool for 38 long years if he has not seen evidence that people were getting healed in that place. Are you getting what I'm saying? He, he's not a fool. I don't think the man was a fool. <clears throat> 38 long. Now look at the confession of the man. He says, look, anytime the angel comes and stirs the water, meaning by experience, they knew that the water has been stirred by an angel. And then he says, because nobody is here to carry me, someone else get, gets into the pool before me. And the person is healed. Now, if the person didn't get healed, he will still have hope to roll into the water. But he said, look, this is what has been happening all this while. So that's experience that the man is talking. So if, if nothing stirred the water, he wouldn't be lying. He wouldn't be saying that to Jesus. And if he didn't see a confirmation that a sick person got into that water and got healed, he wouldn't be saying that to Jesus. And guess what? Jesus looked at him and says, hey, stand up, take up your bed and go home. That was an instruction. It's left for the man to obey. It's left for him to disagree or not to obey. Every miracle you see in scripture came by instruction. That's one thing I wanted to know. If you've got to manifest God's calling in your life, you've got to listen attentively.
to instructions that the Lord gives to you. Thank you very much. Our time is up for today. And we're going to continue tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is going to be the last day of the month. Praise God. I'm going to be praying for you specially. And, and today, by 12 noon, you can join us in our lunch, our prayer meeting. And also prepare for our monthly 24-hour fast and prayer on the 1st of July. Praise God. I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.